Hey brother, in this video I'm going to talk about the 11 weak traits that men sometimes have in their relationships. And I can tell you, if you're exhibiting any of these, you're going to lose a woman. You're going to lose either if she's your wife, it doesn't matter, her commitment's not going to matter. She's going to lose attraction for you, and then she's going to tell you that she loves you, but she's not in love with you. And if you're just dating a woman, you're just starting out dating her, she'll just start to ghost you. You'll find that she'll text you slower. She'll get back to you in a longer time frame. She will not be as responsive. She'll start giving you one word answers. And these are all things that start to show that the woman is get, losing interest in you. So again, in this video, we're gonna talk about the 11 traits that weak men exhibit. Lack of ambition, the inability or the lack of drive to go and have more for yourself in your life. In other words, you kind of need to go after something. You have some sort of drive, something that's achievable, something that is compelling for you to want to push through your fears and insecurities to move forward. She needs to see this because by doing this, by having this ambition, this drive, she can feel safer that you're going to provide and protect her in life. If she can't see that you're driving towards something, she's gonna feel like you're gonna fall apart. And then if you fall apart, everything falls apart. Because as the man, subconsciously, she's looking for you to support and have structure in the relationship. But if you don't have that, that drive pointed towards somewhere, she's gonna say, well, what are we gonna do? Just sit around and watch Netflix every night? Are we gonna go anywhere with our lives? Do I have something to look forward to? Can I see that our children are gonna have something that they can strive to achieve and go towards? Are you building a legacy for your family that you can leave towards your children once you pass? And your legacy isn't just a financial portion of your ambition and drive, it's also the knowledge, it's also the value as you as a person, it's everything that you bring to the table that you can pass on to the next generation. She wants to see this. If you don't have this kind of ambition and drive, then you're leaving your, ch your children and your family nothing. And so this is the biggest trait that men need to exhibit is some sort of ambition. If, if you have a lack of ambition, lack of drive, no compelling vision, you're going to find that when she asks you the big question of, hey, where is this going? You're going to find that you're not going to be able to answer it. You're just going to think she's saying, hey, when are you going to commit to me? Really, she's looking for you to demonstrate where is this going in conjunction with her. The next one is insecurity. I don't tell guys in the program to be confident. I think trying to be confident is too hard to do. What I ask guys to do is be secure in who you are as a person. Not as a man, not as a producer, not as anything related to the family, but as a person. Are you confident or insecure in who you are? And the only way to get there is by going in and diving into all of your deep insecurities and leveraging them to move you forward. Usually you have to go past some sort of fear. Right? If you're going to get over an insecurity, you have to face some sort of fear or some sort of story that's driving that fear within yourself. Then from this place, you can become more secure in who you are. Now, why does she want this? Why does she want you to be secure in who you are? Because from security comes certainty. So we just talked about ambition. You dealing with your insecurities means that you're going to be certain in the direction that you're taking. Why? Because you're not shackled by fear. Because you've gone and you've done things that other guys haven't done. And you've been able to leverage your experience in overcoming that fear to drive you towards certainty and overcoming other fears in the future. And this is what she wants to see. And everybody's going to be scared of things, but it's the guy who has courage to overcome that fear is the guy that actually gets things done and actually goes and tries more than the fearful guy ever even attempts to think about. And so she's looking for you to be secure in yourself, not in being the guy that she wants you to be, be the guy that you want to be. This is key. And weak men don't do that. Weak men don't go and try to become secure in themselves. What they end up doing is they try to become whatever she wants so that he can, he can get that validation from her so that she can like him. A guy who's secure in himself doesn't need her to like him. He likes himself. Lack of hygiene. You're like, Ed, why are we talking about hygiene here? We're not in high school. The PE teacher ain't telling me to put deodorant on for the 14th time. Like, why are we talking about hygiene? Because hygiene talks about attention to detail. It means that you know how you're going to operate in society and you feel secure in yourself to become whoever you need to become. In other words, you can be messy looking if you want to, just it has to be in a specific way. In other words, if you're going to look unkept, it needs to look like you did that on purpose. You don't want to look like that guy just rolled out of bed in the morning and didn't even think about what he put on. And he's got a tear in his shirt and he's got a freaking stain from the Dr. Pepper he got from the 7-Eleven last night. So your hygiene is important because if you're not taking care of your hygiene, you're going to smell bad, you're going to look bad, and you're going to look like you're a hobo. She doesn't want that. She wants to look like she's dealing with a high society, high level guy. And if you aren't that kind of guy, 
you should at least look like you are put together intentionally in the way that you want. Why? Because you're secure in who you are and you're secure in who you want to become. And so if you're a guy that's like, well, I just wear jeans. I'll never wear a suit because that's just not my thing. For most guys that will say that means that they don't like to wear the suit. You should be able to move through any kind of group that you're a part of or any kind of group or social place that you're gonna be a part of. You should be able to move in these places and it's gonna require your hygiene in the way that you look. So yeah, you gotta wear a suit sometimes. Yeah, you gotta look casual sometimes. Yeah, you gotta look like you are on fire professionally. Yeah, you should look like you can go to the gym. You should look like you should be able to do all of these things because it shows a level of competence within you and a, and a level of conscious attention to detail. And that conscious attention to detail means that you've got things on point. That means the more things that you could demonstrate that you have on point better than the next guy means that she can feel secure in being with you. All these things matter because they kind of come together for, the, for the, pa the whole package of the man. And so really, you're not doing them for her. You're doing them for yourself. You're doing it for you to become the best version of yourself. But through that, she's going to notice these things. So again, the more you're on point with all the things you can in your life, the more it demonstrates to her that you are trustable, worthy of success, and that you actually have success in many areas of your life. Laziness. What is laziness really? It's not necessarily not having the motivation to do something. Typically guys will have all the motivation in the world to do something if he has a compelling why. Laziness is the lack of being proactive. In other words, I'm just going to wait till the last minute till I'm forced to do something. And I can't tell you, that's one of my biggest pet peeves when I'm ever working with somebody is lack of proactiveness because it means they're waiting around for everything else to happen. They're not taking charge of what needs to happen in their life. So they wait until something blows up and then they react and they fight fires the whole time. You don't want to be this kind of guy who's not proactive. Being proactive is the opposite of laziness. So it means I'm going to get ahead of it before it becomes a problem. And so if you get ahead of things before they become a problem, you start finding that you can start building on the next thing and the next thing and the next thing in life. And then you can build something great, right? I'm not going to go and wait till I have a heart attack to go to the gym. That would be foolish. I'm gonna to go to the gym now and every day from now so that never happens. I'm proactive. And so what we're looking for is we're not looking for necessarily laziness, but being proactive. This is like the problem that men have in their marriages. The woman will start yelling at them, nagging them about something. It's like, why don't you help me with the dishes? Why don't you help me out with the kids? Why don't you help me out with whatever? And it's his lack of being proactive in regards to the family and the things that are happening in and around the household. Being proactive is what gets you further in life. But if you're delaying because you have a lot of procrastination, because you got a lot of stories in your head about failure and fear, then you're not going to be able to be proactive. You're going to keep falling behind on things. And this is what she's looking for. This is why all the points previous kind of lead up to this. This sense of proactiveness is what's going to get you further and further ahead and allow you to compound over and over and over again for what's coming up in the future. Are you dishonest? Now, what she's looking for in here is are you fooling her? Are you making yourself out to be a different kind of person than you really are? Because see, for her, she needs to see that you're the, exactly the kind of guy she thinks you are, or better than that, through your actions and honest tells. So one of the main reasons and one of the main whys that a woman will test you is one, are you a fucking liar? And she's going to look at this and she's going to look at what you say versus what you do. And so a lot of guys will talk, 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 trying to come off as a certain kind of guy or be too agreeable. And she's going to feel it coming off of you. She's going to feel the, the insecurity coming off of you. So insecurity generally is a tell for you're lying about something. Why? Because you're going to hide those things you're insecure about. And she's like, he's lying about something. I don't know what it is, but he's lying about something. This is why guys will come off as being a creep. Because a lot of these things that he's doing where he's coming off as a liar, but he's coming off as super sweet, but on the inside, he's really manipulating. He's trying to be sweet so he can get something. He's being nice so he can get another thing from her. And this is the problem with the nice guy. This is why they always talk about the quintessential nice guy always being like a manipulator, because he really is. There's this covert, what uh, Robert Glover calls the covert contract. Or what I say is a hidden agenda, like he's trying to do something to get something from her versus just trying to connect with her in an authentic way. And so you coming off as a liar, being dishonest about what you're doing and dishonest about where you're going in life and what you're doing and how you are. Anytime these things start to fall apart, you are now start creating a relationship based on lies. And so if you are a strong guy and you are solid in who you are and you're solid in where you're going and you have all your things in order, you don't have to lie. If you are able to just be open and honest with who you are, even if it's a flaw, that'll go a lot further than you trying to hide it and then it coming out like three weeks later and then she has a big blow up at you because she doesn't know you anymore. And that's what's gonna happen to you if you keep lying. Weak men are overly controlling. And what does that mean to be controlling? 
Typically, he's, what he's trying to do is he's trying to control her attention. So what he'll do is he'll watch all the little things that she does in order to try to make sure that she's paying attention to him. And then if she doesn't pay attention to him, he'll try to do something so that she will. So a controlling guy is a guy that's really insecure. Because what he has to do is he has to control the woman because he doesn't believe directly that he's actually valuable. And so he has to control her behavior and her actions and everything she's doing and who she's texting and where she's going because he feels that she's going to leave him at any point in time. So you... As a guy, don't try to control her. Let her do whatever it is she wants. She, you will know her by her fruit. In other words, just watch her actions. And don't listen to what she's saying. Just watch her actions. If you watch her actions, she'll tell you everything you need to know. And so you trying to control her behavior, you trying to be the policeman, the father, is just going to have her rebel against you. And you do too much of this, then it's going to belie all of your insecurity, and then she's going to start not texting you as much. You'll get one-word answers. Maybe she'll eventually tell you that she loves you but is not in love with you anymore. Or she'll just say you're too controlling because you're trying to get her to do whatever it is you want to do. You don't need to control her. In fact, why would you want to spend any time trying to control a woman? You're just having a hard time trying to control yourself and your habits and goals and your lifestyle. Why would you try to control somebody else? It's much easier just to control yourself and your perception of reality than it is to try to control somebody else's behaviors. And even if you do control her physically on the outside, you'll never control her heart. You'll never control her thoughts. You can't. It's impossible. So just let it go. There's no reason for it. It's better to just focus all that attention on where you want to go and why. Having emotional intelligence is probably one of the strongest things you can do as a man when you're relating to your woman or to anybody for that matter. You being able to get dive into your own emotional state and understanding what's going on is going to help you tremendously because if you can tell what's going on within you, you'll then be able to see what's going on within her. And if you can see what's going on within her, then you can actually ask the right questions to get her to open up and talk to you more and to express herself and to be more of herself and for her to trust you more. But if you don't have that kind of emotional intelligence because you haven't dove into your own emotional state, you just hide behind these walls of logic and the facts and figures, then you're never going to actually be able to go into this woman and see what's going on with her. And so when a woman says, I like a guy who has a sense of humor, this is what she's talking about, emotional intelligence. He can read the room and he can make a joke. Or he can tease her in a playful way without coming off as an asshole. And this is key. To be able to tease her, to be able to have these joking and keep things light demonstrates a, a whole lot of emotional intelligence. When you can see that she's upset and you can navigate that deftly and bring her back and lead her into a happier emotional state, this demonstrates emotional intelligence. So why is this important with her? Because if she can see that you're emotionally intelligent, she can trust that she can see where you're going to go. She can see that you're in control of your emotions. You're not going to fly off the handle so you end up hurting her or being abusive. And even more so, it demonstrates for the children that she might have with you one day. And so you may never have chil children with this woman, but she's still, this still is part of her subconscious. She's still evaluating you and your fatherly ability. And the more emotionally intelligent you are, the better father you're going to be. And this is directly relates to how she's going to find you as attractive or not. You hear women talk about it all the time. I love seeing a guy play with his kids. This is demonstrating emotional intelligence. It shows that you can be light, that, it, that life isn't so hard, that you can really understand people. You can lead them, children and her, into a better place whenever anybody flies off the handle. You're not going to take them at face value and say, oh, this person's just a jerk because they yelled or they threw something. You're going to see the person and the love that's underneath, and you're going to address it to that place and lead that person back into the place that you know where they can go, back into their heart. And you being able to do that demonstrates massively that you have a lot more emotional intelligence and a lot more emotional control over yourself and that you can pivot yourself to go into the direction you need to go versus the one that you are defaulting to. Weak men are unreliable. Why? Because they lack emotional intelligence and emotional self-control, which means that they're going to be late. They're going to procrastinate. They're going to be insecure about things. They're going to lie about the fact that they're insecure about things. They're going to lie about the fact that they're late. This is the problem with a guy who is unreliable. And so you being able to do the things you say you're going to do is what's going to earn a lot more trust with her. Guys will do this all the time. They'll sit there and they'll just play lip service to something. They'll say, yeah, maybe I'll change or I'll go do it. I'll get around to it. And then they never get around to actually doing it. And so then she doesn't trust him. And she's like, well, I'm just angry at him. And he's just going to lie to me yet again. And so you being unreliable and not doing what you say you're going to do makes it so you're untrustworthy. And if she can't trust you, she's not going to find you safe enough to open up to sexually. This is always a big problem for guys. She has to be able to trust you on some level. And if you keep constantly doing things that are unreliable, 
Then she's going to get angry at you, obviously, and you're going to get angry at yourself because you probably can't do any of your other habits either. You might not be reliable with her, and that just shows that you're probably not reliable with yourself. And so this insecurity that comes up from being unreliable starts to show up in your relationship. Not only that, but then she starts getting annoyed and irritated with you, and eventually it becomes into resentment, and that kind of resentment just starts snowballing everything out of, out of order. And so you have to make sure that you stick to what you say you're going to do. You have to be reliable and be trustworthy. Weak men have poor communication. In other words, they don't tell people what they're doing and why they're doing it. Now, you don't have to do everything and express every little thing going on, but at, at some point you have to express what's going on within you. So women will always complain to their men that you don't communicate with me. What's going on within you? What's going on inside? And most guys can't communicate to that because they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about what's really going on within themselves because they've never explored it. Your ability to actually communicate what you're doing shows respect for the other person. You let them know you're going to be late. You let them know what you're up to and why you're going in whichever place that happens to be. In my relationship with my wife, we do what's called the way of absolute candor, which means like, hey, if I have an issue, I'm going to tell you what's going on deep within me as it pertains to me from my perception. In other words, if I, were, if I was feeling insecure about something, I'd say, hey, when you said that, I had the reaction of, I feel like you're looking at another guy. And that led to this place of, I feel like I'm not enough, and this is what's going on with me. Just let you know. That gives her the opportunity to express deeply within her what's actually happening. She can say, well, I wasn't really thinking that at all, and this is what's happening, and I'm sorry that that happened with you. And that's cool. And then you resolve it. In this place, there's no accusations. We can actually both come to the table honestly with what's happening. But if you're with somebody who's manipulative, they will use this against you. So in your relationship, you have to be with somebody who actually cares about you and what's going on within you. But you have to be able to communicate effectively what's going on within you and what you're doing generally about your business in, in the day. If you can't communicate exactly what's going on, then you're going to have problems because she's going to find you unreliable. She's going to find that you're untrustworthy and she's going to think that maybe you are a liar. And so being very clear on who you are and what you intend to do is good. Now, on the other hand, you could over-communicate, and we're not trying to over-communicate. She doesn't need to know every little thing and every little detail. But you have to at least give some sort of credence on what's happening in your life so that she knows what to expect. Lack of respect. So a lot of guys will do this. They'll just kind of steamroll over the woman and what she wants. And he doesn't actually think about like what she might want to do. And he'll just be overbearing, and he'll be condescending, or he'll be mansplaining. In this place of being not respectful, you have to at least see what's going on with her. If you can't see what's going on with her, that kind of indicates that you don't have a lot of emotional intelligence. Or you might be with somebody who just doesn't communicate well. Then in that case, you want to open her up and say, hey, what's going on with you? And you need to be the one that's kind of driving the communication channel. Some women are not good communicators, but you can be, and you can also pull that communication out of her. And in doing so, you can find out where you know, the respect needs to be. And so a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll try to save their woman. They'll try to be Prince Charming. And he feels like if he can save her, and he can save her enough times, he'll make her happy. And if she's happy, she'll love him forever. But the problem is this comes off as condescending. and doesn't really show that, hey, he's dealing with a grown-ass woman who can take care of her own problems. And so you, as a man, you need to give her the space to actually take care of her own problems. And don't be so forthcoming to try to save her or try to do something for her. Maybe if she asks you, she, you might do it. Don't just assume and start doing stuff for her and start driving this down her throat. This doesn't show any kind of respect for her. But respect also goes two ways. If she's not respecting you, then you shouldn't give her time and attention. This doesn't mean you have to start yelling at her or force boundaries. Typically, when you're not having the kind of respect that you feel like you deserve, you communicate it clearly, and then you remove your time and attention. Even if you're married, that's pretty much all you have to do, even on a first date. Like you don't have, it's not that complicated. You don't have to get into an argument. So you, as a person, the greatest gift that you can give anybody is your time and attention. And so when somebody isn't honoring it, you just remove it. And the last trait that weak men do is they are self-centered. What does that exactly mean? It means everything's about me. I'm only thinking about how things affect me. I'm only thinking about the things that I want to think about. I'm only talking about the things that are on my mind. And I'm never asking questions or trying to figure out what's going on with this person. And so being self-centered is very, it's very easy to fall into. Most people do this. Most people love to talk about themselves constantly and they never actually ask questions about the other person. They wonder why they have no friends. It's because everything's about them. Everything's from their point of view. And so when you're with somebody and you're talking to them all the time, it gets a little bit boring. It's like, man, this person's only talking about themselves and what they're doing all the time. Like, I can't, I can't put a word in edgewise here. 
And I've seen this over and over and over again. A guy's on a date and he just won't shut the fuck up. He's just talking and talking and talking because he's like hoping that she'll be enamored by all the cool things he's doing and never asks her a single question. And on a date, you should be asking almost all the questions. Why? Because you want to get to know her. And she is going to want to talk about herself, as most people do. And when you get to do this, you get to see more and more about her, which will then tell you what kind of person you're dealing with here. Most guys just get so enamored by her beauty and the fact that she's got a, he's got a woman sitting across from him that he's like, holy shit. And he just keeps talking and talking and talking and talking, trying to get her to be impressed by him. But you, on the date, you'll ask her questions. It won't be about you. It'll be about her. Why? Again, you want to get to know her. You want to see what her, she's all about. You want to be able to gauge if she's actually a good match for you versus just being all in on the first date just because she showed you some sort of time and attention. Don't make it about you. When you're talking and you're expressing your thoughts, think about what that other person might think about in relation to it. Does she actually, does this actually going to interest her? Does she actually want to hear this? Does this actually help the conversation? Most people get into conversation about boneheaded topics like politics or religion. So what ends up happening is you end up having this conversation that just doesn't really go anywhere and the other person wants to get out of there and this person can't even see the fact the other person wants to get the fuck out of there. Make life about the other person. Relationships are about giving. They're about the other person. If two people get into a relationship and they make it about the other person, then you end up having a really good, awesome, and amazing relationship. You have two givers given to each other, then they both always feel filled up. But typically that's not the case. You usually have one giver and one taker and they can't seem to get apart. So for you, Make it about the other person. It doesn't have to be about you. In fact, the less it's about you, the more your ego will be tamped down and the more you'll be able to actually have a good beneficial relationship. So there you have it. Those are the 11 ways that men demonstrate weakness in a relationship, really in life. And so for you, you won't be that kind of guy. You're destined for more. You can do more than that and you know it. That's why you're watching this video. You want more out of your life. You want to get to something that you know you can achieve. Either maybe have that perfect woman or a purpose that pays. And so you're watching this video, like, how do I become less weak? And it's never about becoming super strong. It's always about being less weak. Just like you can never be right, you can only just be less wrong. And so in this situation where you're trying to be not a weak guy, you'll find that almost all the weaknesses comes from a deep feeling of ineptitude, a feeling that I don't matter, that I'm not enough, and that I can't do it, and I don't deserve this, and all these other bullshit stories that are going on within you. And so you, as a man, the fastest way to get through all of this is actually dive deep within yourself and deal with all the little things and all the little insecurities and the bullshit stories that you tell yourself that you're not enough, that you can't do it, that you can't have the kind of woman that you want, you can't have the life that you deserve. And you just absolutely be ruthless with those stories. And then you go out in the world and you prove them wrong. It's not enough to just sit here and start playing these mental games with yourself and say, okay, I can do it, I can do it, I know it. No, it requires you to actually get out there and do something because you're gonna to have to get new data to overwrite your old data of limiting beliefs. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, my brother. If you like it, hit the like button, and if you wanna see more, hit subscribe. And if you want to see how to improve yourself as a man, check out this video, pachow, right there, and I'll see you in the next one.